When shooting close up in the studio, should you use a macro lens or a tilt shift lens? I'm going to talk about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com. I'm sure you have photo questions. Go on that site. There's a form there you can fill out. Ask me anything photography related, and I will do my best to answer it right here on a future show. Also, if you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and click that button down below. Hit the little bell icon. You'll be notified as soon as new photo shows come out all week long from myself and the other photo hosts right here on Adorama TV. Lastly, I've started a new show on my personal YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below. It's called From the Vault. I take a look back at my 30-year archive and I tell the behind the scenes stories of some of my images. I'm also offering fine art signed prints for a limited time. So I hope you'll check that out on my YouTube channel. All right, let's get right to today's show. I got a question from Dixon L and Dixon wants to know, under what circumstances would it be better to use a tilt shift lens for studio food photography versus using focus stacking with a regular macro lens? Dixon, thanks so much for sending in that question. I really appreciate it. As always, what I'm gonna do is give some context here and discuss both lenses first and give an idea of how they work and why you would use them before I get to your very specific question. I've put timestamps down below if you wanna skip around. But first of all, macro photography. It doesn't really matter if you're photographing food or anything else in the studio or if you're outdoors and shooting small objects. That's usually when you would use, you would want macro photographs. It's when you wanna shoot something very, very close up. Now there are a few ways to make macro images. The first is to get a lens like this. This is a dedicated macro lens. This is the Canon 100 millimeter 2.8 L macro. It's a fantastic lens, very sharp, also makes a great portrait lens. But generally, if you're buying this lens, it's because you wanna use it for macro photography. It allows you to shoot very close. I believe the minimum focusing distance is something like just under 12 inches, just under a foot. So very, very close you can get with that. Um, lens. Now that's one way to do it. You can also, if you don't want to shell out for a dedicated macro lens, you can get extension tubes. I've done videos about them. I'll put links down below as far as how those work. You put those on a regular lens and it extends the distance between the sensor and the lens and actually allows you to focus a lot closer than that lens would normally allow. And there are even other little tricks you can do like taking a lens and flipping it around and actually holding it out in front of your camera body and shooting through it backwards, which is a, a last resort. It's not the, the most uh, going to be the best quality, but uh, the most, you know, uh, for focus quality. But um, it is one way to do it in a pinch if you need to. Again, I'll put videos, links to the videos down below where I've talked about those before. The challenge with macro photography is that your depth of field is very, very shallow. You know what we're talking about with depth of field. Your plane of focus is, is with a lens like that, is parallel to the camera sensor. So you're focusing on an area that's, that's perpendicular to the lens, right? And so as you change your focus, that area is gonna move in and out. But the amount of focus, the amount of the depth of field where it starts, before it starts to get more out of focus in front and back, that's your depth of field. Now, because you're so close to something, that depth of field is gonna be very, very shallow. Even when you're shooting at small apertures like F8, F11, F16, it's still gonna be very, very shallow. So that makes it somewhat difficult to photograph when you want everything in focus. The way you would do that if you're shooting macro and you want everything from front to back to be in focus is a technique that Dixon mentioned called focus stacking. And what that is, is you shoot multiple images by, and you change your plane of focus just slightly each time, uh, you know, basically the front of the image and then you work your way back or you can go either direction, of course, but just slightly changing the part, the sliver that's in focus each time. And then you combine them together in post-processing. Now, some cameras actually have a mode that will do that in the camera itself. Personally, I prefer to have the control of doing it later in the computer, but either way, um, that's a post-processing thing. That's after the pictures have been shot and it's shooting multiple images and then putting them together. If you want to do it in the computer, there are some dedicated programs to do it. Photoshop also, uh, if you use the auto blend mode in Photoshop, that will do a pretty good job. Now for a food image, I'm not sure I would necessarily use a macro lens if I wanted a deeper depth of field because that's going to be really challenging to do. Um, you could just back up and use a longer lens and shoot at a more shallow depth uh, aperture and that will give you a bit more area that's going to be in focus from front to back. Now that's a macro lens. Let's talk about a tilt shift lens. This is the Canon TSE 90mm 2.8L 
macro. It is also a macro lens. It doesn't let you focus quite as close as the dedicated macro will. Uh, I think it's about 16 inches on this lens is the minimum focusing distance as opposed to 12. So it's it's not going to be as good uh, or as, you know, you can't focus quite as close as you can with that dedicated macro, but it adds a whole bunch of other features. It's called a tilt shift lens. So obviously you can tilt and you can shift. You can also rotate. Um, now this question in particular is about the tilt function of this lens. Um, so what that means is by tilting the lens, this is how it works, right? So the lens, which of course is normally uh, a straight lens, there are all kinds of buttons on here that allow you to change your tilt and your shift. Let's talk about the tilt. That's going to be this button here. And what this allows you to do as you turn this lens, what happens is it actually changes the tilt of the lens, right? It actually changes the direction of how that lens moves and how the light is going to come through. Now you can go, that's obviously the zero position. You can go up, you can go down, you can go either direction with the tilt function. And by doing that, the light comes through at a different angle and hits the image sensor in a different direction than it would if it was coming straight through. Basically, the focus plane is projected onto the image sensor at an angle, not perfectly parallel to where it would on a normal lens. Now, this can get really complicated and I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. There are calculations and diagrams online to figure out exactly where the focus goes. But in general, this is the way I think of it. It basically has to do with the angle you're tilting, right? So if you're taking a picture of something right here, right? And you're, you're shooting straight. If you turn this way, right? Your camera's here. The, I've now tilted so it goes up like that. So if I was shooting something like this, my plane of focus now is more like that. It's not exactly parallel to the front of the lens because it changes, but it's actually going to be this direction. If I was tilting down, it would do the opposite. It would go this way. So if you're shooting something that's straight like this and your plane of focus is like this, then only that little middle sliver is going to be sharp, right? Only the place where that plane of focus crosses your subject is going to be in focus. And then the rest of it is going to get out of focus, not because of aperture depth of field as we would normally expect in a traditional lens, but because the focus plane has been changed, that is why it changes the um, what, you know, the perception of depth of field, right? Tilt shift lenses open up all kinds of creative possibilities because you can tilt in opposite directions of your, your, you know, what you would traditionally expect, or you can go with it. You can turn, you can tilt, you can shift, you can do all kinds of things. Like I said, it doesn't tr really change the, as far as the aperture depth of field, but if I was to go opposite of what I was shooting, like I said, it would either, I could either have it so it, everything was sharp, in the, on this plane of focus, or if I went the other way, it would only be one little sliver. So it really will, will give you all kinds of new creative possibilities and you can choose what you want to focus on that's different from a traditional lens. Now, as far as the shift function of this lens, architectural photographers use that uh, very commonly. That's going to help you prevent or minimize what's called keystoning, where lines converge on tall buildings. You can ac actually straighten those out instead of looking up at buildings and having them go like that. You can you can keep the lens straight and then shift it up so that um, those lines are straight. Uh, but that's not really relevant to today's question. By the way, an interesting side note about tilt shift lenses, without any adjustments at all, they project a wider area than is needed onto the image sensor. Why is that? It has to have room to move. When you move that that projected image by tilting or shifting or whatever, you still need to be able to hit the entire image sensor. So because it projects a wider area than is really needed if you're not doing any adjustments, um, the thing is all lenses have some loss in quality around the edges. Just the, that's the way the optics work in these lenses. But with that larger projected image, the sensor isn't capturing the edges like a normal lens would. Therefore, the lens is going to be really sharp from edge to edge. So I know some photographers who use tilt shift lenses and don't tilt or shift it. They just use it for portraits because it is a crazy sharp lens uh, from edge to edge all the way, all the way around. So um, it's another little bonus about tilt shifts. So now that we know what both lenses do, let's get to Dixon's particular question um, about using uh, stu for studio food photography, whether it's better to use a macro with um, uh, focus stacking or use a tilt shift. Well, 
The simple answer is if you want everything in focus from front to back, top to bottom, then focus stacking is really gonna be the best way to go or back up and use a non-macro lens, a regular lens and shoot with the aperture closed down, right? That's gonna be your best option to get everything front to back, top to bottom, um, in focus if that's the look you want. Now, there's nothing wrong with using shallow depth of field to make an interesting image or using a tilt shift to get some weird, you know, uh, effects that that don't look like traditional photographs, uh, you know, what we would expect. Um, but if, if your goal is edge to edge, in focus, top to bottom, up and down, you're not gonna be able to do that with a tilt shift lens because you're still gonna have a plane of focus. Now, the depth of field does, isn't, it doesn't work the way it does on a traditional uh, lens. It actually is a wedge shaped. It's not, you know, there's all kinds of complications there and things that will change the way your image looks. So you can mess around with that, but it's not gonna be the best method to get everything sharp in focus from front to back if that's what you're trying to get. Now, there certainly are other uses for a tilt shift. And if you, um, and it doubles as a pretty decent macro lens. So if, if it's something you are gonna use uh, that shift function, and you're gonna use the tilt, tilt function for other things, um, then certainly it's a great investment. However, it's about twice the cost of a dedicated macro lens, at least as far as these two lenses go. So if you're really only doing macro photography, then the macro lens is absolutely the way to go or one of those other options I talked about earlier. So Dixon, I hope that helps. I know it can be confusing. It's, a, it's an easy rabbit hole to go down, but that's the simplest answer I can give um, while also giving some explanation. So thanks for asking that question. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys like this video, please hit the like button down below. Hopefully you're already a subscriber. I'll also be in the comments um, throughout the week. So uh, you can leave me a comment down there. Am I crazy? Do I know what I'm talking about? Or am I just uh, making it all up? So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys being here every week. Remember, there's a new episode at 10 a.m. Eastern every Monday. I hope you'll come back next time and join me here on Ask David Bergman.